stupidest names you can have. <laughs> because we out here in these streets, yeah. but these politics is trickling down, so it's all intertwined, man. So we got to figure out how to work with the way we do so Shout out to the All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Politically Street, to where we are a podcast that basically is for information purposes only. We don't endorse any kind of candidates. We're just out here to create a positive space and give off information. So with that being said, episode three, I have a good friend of mine, Mr. Kevin Archer. Uh, how you been, brother? Hey, man. <laughs> been blessed, brothers. Yeah? That's what I can phrase you. Okay, okay, man. It's good to see you, man. Kevin and I, Likewise. We, uh, we've been friends for a long time. Now. I met Kevin actually in my our Spanish class. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, it, it's, it's uh, middle school, man. And so we, uh, he and I, we talk a lot uh, over the years, you know, um, about how even when we don't talk every day, we still have that genuine friendship, you know what I mean? And so I, I just, I, I, I'm thankful for him. I was sharing with him off camera before we got on about how he actually inspired me to be an entrepreneur-minded person, you know, because uh, he was in with his company, uh, I forget what it was called, but they took portraits and he would he would drive around all uh, parts of Texas, man. And he uh, he called me up one day and said, "Hey, Rob, man, uh, come ride with me." I said, "I'm gonna ride with you, man." And so, man, I didn't know, man. He he was on it back then, and so that's why I, I actually brought him on because I, I I value his opinions, I value his his insight, his knowledge. You know, even over the years, he's he's supported me in all my ventures. You know what I mean? From opening the store up. I remember you brought a book by Oric Backers. Yeah. about writing a, a, a business plan. I still got that book, man. So um, <laughs> that, man, between opening up Square Biz, you know, being a, you know, a solid investor, uh, I mean, all kinds of things, man. So with that being said, hey, man, my friend Kevin Archer, man. Hey, so. man. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can tell uh, so many stories, man. <laughs> just kind of uh, just kind of talking, just kicking the tires on, on so many different things. Mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. I was telling Rob also off camera, man. I look to these guys, I mean, him and, uh, and, and Damien. Mm -hmm. and, Shout out to Damien uh, Pelley. Yeah, uh, for, uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of keeping me, uh, you know, looking ahead and focused as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were, you know, they were working, doing their thing, and it just kind of pushed me to say, okay, I got to keep, I got to keep up with these guys, man. So I got to, <laughs> I got to start getting on my game. Um, and so that's, you know, I appreciate him and, and, uh, and, and Many others, man, countless others, but um, you know Chris as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, Sorry, uh, Chris, man. Yeah, yeah, best part, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys. Thank All you right. for having cool, me. Cool, cool, man. So, what I brought you on here today, man, is talk about something that, that you're passionate about, which is personal finance. You know, so I had another, another young man on here, uh, Calvin Carruthers. He was talking about credit. You know, and so, but uh, growing up in, I guess, in a disadvantaged home, I'm gonna say like that, uh, when certain uh, things aren't taught to us early on. Uh, I think that we can learn about it now, you know, so, but you're, you're one of the only people that I knew growing up that really talked about financing and, you know, saving and things like that. So what, what, are, you, what, is, what are some of your things that you're, you're instilling to your kids and then what you think that should be put out there now? Well, a lot of it starts, man, with the why. Why are we doing it, man? And, you know, it's, it's near and dear to my heart because, um, you know, <clears throat> as, as you stated, um, it's our, uh, you know, we didn't grow up with it in our house. It right. wasn't talked about right. uh, in our house. Um, and so from a poverty, I say, mindset um, uh, as well, it, it's like, you know, why do we think the way we think? Mm -hmm. And why are we doing what we're doing? Mm -hmm. And it, it just kind of pushed me to just more, pay more attention. Gotcha. Um, and so um, it, so with that, you know, just talking with, with my kids, uh, I have two kids, three, mm -hmm. three kids now, but... Um, and, and just making sure that they don't kind of follow the same patterns of what we followed or uh, have followed. Mm -hmm. uh, so just kind of shifting, shifting that generational, I call it a curse mm -hmm. of sorts, as a lot of people refer to it as. But, um, but you know, a lot of it's just experiences as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, as far as, as personal finance, so should we... Uh, teach our kids about like, you know, uh, IRAs or annuities or what, what's, uh, and I don't know if you have any kind of information that's out there now, but I don't want to give you anything away if you can tell you what you have, but what, what's more important, uh, let's say, you know, I have a kid, you know, I have three kids, one's 17, uh, 15, and 13, what should I instill in them now to where they get to my age and won't have to worry about, you know, working capital or whatever else it is, what, what's, what should we instill in them now? Well, I think the main thing is work ethic, man. 
Okay. Um, is making sure that they know that they have to work and earn for what they want to get. Mm -hmm. um, and doing it as early as possible, I think, is, is important, mm -hmm. as best we can, obviously. Uh, you can't have a five-year-old just you know telling them that, but you know once they hit that that teen, preteen, mm -hmm. it's it's what's their desire, mm -hmm. um, and, and and also I tell my kids you know about dreaming. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to be? Where do you want to go? What mm -hmm. is it that you want to um, do? What mm -hmm. you want to see? Mm -hmm. All those things mm -hmm. because when that burning desire gets in into you, mm -hmm. um, you gonna it, it's gonna it's it's gonna make you want to excel. Mm -hmm. um, in that in um, itself. Um, um, so those are a couple of things that I normally uh, would talk to the kids about, even before going to talk about IRAs mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and investing. But then also um, just think about trying to get through, you know, whether that be school, mm -hmm. uh, you know, higher education, mm -hmm. whether that be a trade school, mm -hmm. um, whether that's um, you know just you know just being entrepreneurship on your own. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to do? Mm -hmm. How do you get there? So kind of begin with the end in mind. Gotcha. Wow, that's that's kind of hard now with these kids, man. Their their imagination is so, uh, what's the word? It's kind of hindered with with the video games they got going on and things like that. So it's like, how how do we, uh, I guess, water or you know to help them keep their imagination going? You know what I mean? So especially with finances, because we know right. that's important. What how what, what would you suggest? Well. Um, you know, whatever that why is, I mean, mm -hmm. going back to what they want to do, where they want to do, and how to get there, it's kind of work, start to work backwards. From gotcha. There. Okay. Um, whether that means that if they want to be a dentist, whether they want to be an architect, whether they want to be, you know, a game maker, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, how do I get there? Gotcha. Um, what avenues do I need to take in order to do it? Mm -hmm. Do I uh, go to a trade school that can teach me that? Mm -hmm. If it's IT based, do I need to get higher education going to college to do that? Uh, but then also for me from a personal finance perspective, how can I do that from a, and not have to incur a bunch of debt doing mm, it? Oh man, that D word. <laughs> <laughs> debt is what hinders us from becoming wealthy. Mm, um, sure. and, and it it's just flat out mm -hmm. because you're so busy, or we are so busy paying um, the banks, mm -hmm. paying uh, these financial institutions mm -hmm. uh, money. Mm -hmm that could be going into our pocket mm -hmm. on building our future, whether sure. that be, uh, again, creating your own production studio, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it so I, I, I try to encourage that for the kids even mm -hmm. um, now um, is is stay focused and figure on what you want to do and kind of work backwards from that. Gotcha, gotcha. So let me ask you a question because I, I, I ran into this this challenge a while, man. Um, being an entrepreneur, uh, the main thing, of course, is working capital, right? Um, when when did you realize that you know being self-employed uh, was was what you wanted to do? Uh, or even, well, I would say so, just being an investor. I'll say it like that. When, when did you know that that was the avenue to go in order to build onto your platform or well, your portfolio? I still work. Mm -hmm. Full time, mm -hmm. um, but I've always thought to myself to build something on the side, mm -hmm. build it up until enough to where you know, kind of as they say, pull the the the, the boat close to the dock. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it, it, once that that boat gets close to the dock, now you can jump in the boat. Gotcha. You're just trying to uh, you know trying to jump in the boat from from a far distance. Right, right, so right. So from that perspective, I'm trying to I've always wanted to build something on the side to where it catches up to say my my um, full-time income mm -hmm. to where now I can do that full-time. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's <laughs> that's kind of why I've done it. Okay. And, you know, and try to diversify, mm -hmm. um, whether it's one venture, two ventures, or five ventures. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, plant seeds here and there, mm -hmm. um, just, just kind of water them and, mm -hmm. and watch it go. And, you know, it's causes that I believe in. So I believe in, you know, Square Vids, obviously, right, right, I right. believe in you. Uh, <laughs> in, in that regard, man, and I was like, and I love what you were doing. Mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, man, this would be this. This is something that I would love to even invest in. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that be little, small. You know, mm -hmm. how big it could be. Man, just just your insight in itself was was investing enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, let me cut you off. I just no, no, no. And so starting a business is so hard, man, for anybody. Yes, I agree. And so can kind of help plant some seeds of whatever knowledge or insight that I may have, man. You know, starting a tax business. Mm -hmm. um, that's a business that you know. Again, I was. 
I, I, you know, my background's in accounting. Mm -hmm. uh, I got my accounting degree, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, okay, that's a skill that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing family friends, and mm -hmm. then you know, it kind of <laughs> blossomed from right, there right. Um, to where you know we had a location, and we had a couple locations, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, it's just kind of grown from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's some other things that I want to do now as well. So from a personal finance perspective, um, it's near and dear to me mm -hmm. um, to try and you know create um and you know just common people to become a millionaire mm. Inward, man. I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to get that man you know what i mean you know uh what, what i heard you say you know I, i've heard i've heard a lot of uh people like you know napoleon hill and, and uh, andrew carney these people saying doing doing what you love to do because that's right. where you are uh, it won't seem like work right. you know the the, the money is going to come you know what i mean but just just do what you love and so yeah, so you mentioned about your, your tax service, and I was going to go into that. You know, uh, you were one of the only people that I knew that franchised the tax service side. You know what I mean? I was like, man, this this guy's getting it, man. What do I do? You know what I mean? Like, man, where you where, where you hiding the money at, man? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so tell, tell me about what what about uh, that franchise pulled you into there to, to start to uh, utilize their platform? Well, um, I didn't know the business very well. Um, so for me, I knew taxes, I knew how to do it, but didn't know the business. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was, um, let's buy into a franchise to learn the rope, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, did my stint, did my time there, and then it was like, okay, well, great, thank you. I appreciate it. We both made some money mm -hmm. um, part ways, and so that's how we started our own at that point. Yeah. Know, so Rocket Tax Service. Mm -hmm. um, so we just kind of built from that, from, from that platform mm -hmm. uh, forward. Gotcha. So Rocket Tech Service, that's, that's one that you own now. That's correct. Gotcha, that's gotcha. Correct. Where, where exactly is it? Well, it's a small firm, <clears throat> honestly, man. Um, kind of, it's, it's all, it's, it's just me, mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, had a location um, on South Derry Ashford. Okay. Um, and so, I know that, that area well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. When is a good time to, to leave your full-time job and then immerse yourself into your own, uh, your own, your own company? I, well, that, that's a hard question mm -hmm. um, because there's no one solution mm -hmm. to doing it. What mm -hmm. I believe is is building small, mm -hmm. starting small, do what you can mm -hmm. with what you have, mm -hmm. and then let that start to expand. Gotcha. Now, it gets to a point where you have to make that decision on, mm -hmm. I need to take this leap now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, yep, do I have... You know, if I have most of my debts paid off, mm -hmm. or do I have um, in some money in the emergency fund just mm -hmm. kind of sitting there that can catch me in case I fall? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you can kind of start to check some of those boxes that reduces the risk mm -hmm. a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and if you can build that up to, and again, I even say if you can get it to 50% of what you're making now mm -hmm. and still live. Mm -hmm and live off that 50%, yeah, that's, that's a, then you're good. Yeah, Go ahead yeah. and take the leap because yeah. now you can start generating some revenue. You mm -hmm. start you know, promoting more mm -hmm. or things of that sort, but it won't cramp your lifestyle, your family's lifestyle, right, right, a right. whole bunch. So, right. you know, so that, that's kind of my checklist in my mind is how comfortable am I with, 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 <laughs> with what I have in savings? Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, do I have, you know, a, good chunk of my debt paid off mm -hmm. to where I don't have that extra stress or burden to even worry about. And and, and that's a big what one, man. That burden, man, boy, I tell you, man. <laughs> debt, debt will kill us, man. Yeah. Um, and, but, but, you know, there's like four stresses in life, man, mm -hmm. that can really get us down, you know, like our, our, our job, mm -hmm. um, uh, our health, mm -hmm. there's one, relationships, mm -hmm. and then just yes. finances in itself. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of get, uh, you know, those in, in check, mm -hmm. you know, that reduces so much more stress. Yeah. Where you can, do, you know, you can now devote to what you want to do mm -hmm. uh, in your life's passions. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, I mean, there's a lot more I want to talk about, man, but I know, you know, we, we have a, a limited time or whatnot. You got it. Now, um, you know, we, we're talking about calculated risks or whatnot, and so, uh, I know it's kind of almost like an oxymoron, I'm using that term right, you know, it, it's a risk, but it's calculated. How, how do you calculate, I'm okay, this, this, this is what I want to ask you, because it was, it was the reason why, so, the stimulus package. Um, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram and I'm seeing people trying to uh, uh, consult people on how to spend their, their you know, money or whatever else. 
if you were to give some advice, this is what we're going to end with. If you were to give some advice about uh, their stimulus package, if it's six hundred, whatever it is, what, what would you invest in? What, what would you, to, what would you, how would you guide them into how to make that six hundred work for them? If they don't have to put it into bills or whatever else, how, how would you advise them? Well, it just depends on where they are in their life. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because I truly believe, um, you know, hey, having a savings or savings strategy, mm -hmm. um, building a three to six month emergency fund, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. having that set aside to where if a pandemic like this happens again or should happen, mm -hmm. that I have some type of a safe haven to at least still be able to eat, right. uh, still be able to take care of my kids mm -hmm. um, and things of that sort. So to the extent, you, you know, like as, as you said, maybe the debt has already been taken care of, right. most of it has been taken care of, I would say, hey, apply to debt if you can do that, mm -hmm. to reduce that. Gotcha. Um, if that's taken care of already, you say, okay, well, what's step two? Mm -hmm. Well, put some money aside and just have it as an, as an emergency fund, something that I just don't touch or mm -hmm. don't need right away, mm -hmm. but just have it sitting there. Gotcha. Um, and then from there, you know, now you may think about starting to try to invest, mm -hmm. you know, whether that be uh, into my retirement at work, if you, if you have that at work, mm -hmm. um, whether that be IRAs and things of that sort, you know, start your Roth IRA, maybe put it into some sort of a uh, investment vehicle that can start to grow, grow right. over time. Right, right. Because I believe, man, you try to do the work one time, mm -hmm. and then you can reap the benefits of it later. Mm -hmm. So whether that means I'm saying put that into an investment vehicle, let mm -hmm. it start to kind of work for you. Gotcha. And then now you can kind of sit back and reap the reward. And it's a beautiful thing of compound interest over time. It is, I just agree. Just let it sit there and just let it just kind of uh, build. Gotcha. And help you later. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, well, do you have any, any, first of all, thank you, man. Like I said, I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough. Man. Like yeah. I say, every time I call you, you show up, man. Yeah. So you're definitely a man of your word. There's some integrity about yourself, man. So I'm like, I guess we. You know what I mean? It is what it is. We this is still the old school pick and roll that we used to do back then on the court, man. You know what I mean? So, so you have any, any parting words to leave out there to people about hey, this is what Rocket Tax Service provides, or just from speaking from from Kevin Archer, what do you want to impart out there? Well, big thing, man. You know, I, you know, I'm just even trying to think about some things that I want to do in this new year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I even thought about just trying to help a couple people that um, you know have a desire to change their finances mm -hmm. uh, but just maybe work with them mm -hmm. uh, just uh, just some one-on-one -on -one time or just say hey you know here's some things that I think we could do or tweak or things like that that we could uh, uh, can instill or, or maybe even hopefully uh, encourage and mm -hmm. give people some hope mm -hmm. uh, but you know so if I could be of any assistance in that regard, you know, um, I would love to try and help a couple. And I say a couple because right, that's right. about the most I can probably manage at right, one right, time. Right, but, right. you know, if that means like a weekly conference call, a monthly conference call, or Zoom call, or whatever that may be, mm -hmm. to just try and help guide and steer them in the right direction. Or, you know, even they, you know, need some, some tax help. They want uh, someone, you know, that has a background in accounting, random accounting departments, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. But uh, want somebody who um, have been in the tax business for a number of years, mm -hmm. um, but you know, operate with integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, not something where I'm trying to uh, see how I can maximize uh, getting you more money back mm -hmm. from the standpoint of knowing I can do something quicker than you do that. No, wow. that's not how I'd like to operate. I want to right. operate with, with integrity in that mm -hmm. regard. So yeah, so if maybe one of those two things, they okay. can, you know, get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, uh, they can. Yeah, hit me up on you know via email if they'd like. Okay. Um, so Kelvin. Yeah, yeah, give me your email address. I was gonna say Kelvin mm -hmm. at rockettaxservice.com. Mm -hmm. um, might you might want to spell it for anybody here, Kevin or something. So. Uh, Kelvin, K E L V I N mm -hmm. at rockettaxservice.com. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't even give them a personal uh, telephone number. Mm -hmm. um, they just want to reach out, but uh, shoot me a text or something 281 639 4666. And just have a conversation just to figure out where they are mm -hmm. and where they want to go. That's what's up, man. So, like I say, this is another episode of the Flisby Street. My good friend Kevin Archer. And hey, y'all, man, call this man because he, he, he's a wealth of knowledge, you know what I mean? So, uh, make sure when you call him, you heard from the show to mention my name, all right? <laughs> Peace, everybody. Thanks, guys.